B7? What's that? Some kind of vitamin? Learning all those fancy extended arpeggios can be an intimidating task for sure, but little did you know that you can combine simple ingredients you already have laying around the house to make beautiful extended arpeggios today. And you're about to learn how. I'm Uncle Ben, and this is why you suck at guitar. So let's say that you're like a lot of guitar players and you've learned the three most used arpeggio types on guitar, major, minor, and diminished. But now you've just found out that there's a whole another world of deeper extended harmony out there with major seven, minor seven, and dominant seven chords. But who in the world has enough time to learn another complete set of arpeggios on the guitar? You've got to work your job, slop the hogs, paint the fence, you got all those kittens you have to declaw, you got to wrap all your Easter presents, somebody has to milk the iguana, defend your house from feral hogs, and all kinds of other business. Well, as you're about to learn, even if you're just armed with those three simple arpeggio types of major, minor, and diminished, and you know how to use them, you can construct a whole new world of big old expensive jazzy arpeggios in no time. In this video we're going to talk about those three basic arpeggio types and how to combine them to make sweet sweet extended harmony. Then we're going to talk a little bit about why these tricks work the way that they do. As always full tabs and charts and stuff for this lesson are available on my Instagram over at Ben Elder Guitars. Just search for hashtag this is why you suck at guitar 19 Find the charts and stuff and start playing along today. All the cool kids are doing it. If you like what you see in this video and want to help support my channel, you can do that by heading over to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. There's all kinds of downloadable tabs, backing tracks, and bonus lessons over there, even if you're just at the $1 level. So be sure to click the link in the video description below and check out that Patreon page today. Step one, the basics. For the entirety of this lesson, I'm gonna be using E as our root note for all these different major and minor arpeggios. But uh, you could easily move these concepts around to suit whatever root note it is that you need. So let's start off here by talking about major arpeggios, which are constructed by starting off on a root note. Let's use E, the fifth fret on the B string here. And then what we're gonna do is to play the note that is a third away from it. Now, what is a third? You could say it's the note two whole steps past it. You could also say it's the third note of that scale, do, re, mi. You could also say it's the note that's just kind of down and across from it on the next string. Whatever floats your boat. But either way, what we're playing here is the root note E, it's third, which is G sharp, the fourth fret high E string. And it's fifth, which is going to be the seventh fret on the high E string. You could also look at that as being a power chord away from the root note that we played. Or the fifth note in that major scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so. That is how every major arpeggio on earth is formed. Root note, third, and fifth. And this is kind of the blank slate, the cheese pizza of arpeggio types that we're going to base everything else off of. So to all you metal guys out there, don't ignore it because it sounds happy. It's useful. Now a minor arpeggio is constructed by using that blank slate of a major arpeggio, root third and fifth. And what we do to make it minor is to flatten the third. So this note, the one that was kind of down and across, the G sharp note, we're gonna lower that one fret. So it becomes the G note here. The flat third or minor third interval, some people would call that. Now the fifth stays in the same place. So we still have the same root, the same fifth, it's just that the third gets flattened the old Cliff Burton surprise. Root third fifth major, root flat third fifth minor. Now if we continue the flattening here and also flatten the fifth, that's how we get a diminished triad. Root flat third like your minor had, and then not fifth, the power chord interval, but flat fifth. That gives us our big spooky diminished arpeggio. Major, minor, diminished. Now those represent what I would call the three most used arpeggio and triad types on the guitar, major, minor, and diminished. But of course harmony doesn't end there. There is a whole world of chords outside of this and uh, it can be intimidating when you start talking about how a major seven is root third, fifth, seventh, and how maybe a minor seven is root flat third, fifth, flat seventh. That's a lot of formulas and stuff to memorize. A lot of guitar players get intimidated and scurry away into the bushes, never to be seen again. 
But what we're going to do in today's lesson is use those three different arpeggio types strategically arranged on the fretboard to form all these other types of extended chords, and it's really not that hard. Let's start off by talking major 7. Now one way to look at a major 7 arpeggio is it's the 1st, 3rd, 5th, and 7th notes of an E major scale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, which would give us this, root, 3rd, 5th, 7th. Another way to look at a major 7 arpeggio is that it's just a major plus the note a half step behind the root. Okay, so the root is E, right? Here's an E note. You could say just play the note right behind it. That works too. You can look at a major 7 either way. I just don't recommend looking at straight on in the eyes. They take that as an act of hostility and may respond aggressively. Or you can just use two of the things that you already know, a major arpeggio and a minor arpeggio, and learn where to space them out on the fretboard to form a major 7 sound really easily. Check it out. So what you just heard is the sound of the keyboards there playing an E major chord, just a regular old E major. And what I did is implied the sound of an E major 7 on top of it by playing an E major triad and the minor triad that lies two whole steps above the root. Okay, the root is E, right? One step, two steps. Play a minor arpeggio there. Let's go over that one more time. The major triad you're playing, plus the minor triad two whole steps above it, one, two, is gonna give you that sweet, melancholy major seven sound that all softies love. Let's change up the root notes here so you can get another example of this in context here. Let's say I was playing over a regular old happy D major sound, and I wanted to make it sound a little more melancholy. I would play the D triad, and then I also move up two whole steps, one, two, and play the minor triad right there. Now that's an arpeggio with an interest rate that's sure to impress your stepdad. And throughout all these examples, you don't just have to use the little three note, two string, you know, kind of Marty Friedman style arpeggios that I've been using here. You can use any of your full, you know, four string, five string, six string arpeggio shapes and demonstrate this same concept like this. And again, that was simply the sound of an E major chord with an E major arpeggio being played over it. As well as the minor arpeggio, two whole steps above E. One, two. Two great tastes combined to make one new jazzy classic. But Uncle Ben, how it work? How is it that we can take a major triad and a minor triad two whole steps above it and make the sound of major seven. Well, it's actually not that complicated. So let's say we're playing over an E major chord, right? Now, an E major chord is these three notes, E, G sharp, and B. That's its root, third, and fifth, right? Now, whenever we start off by playing the E major arpeggio, E, G sharp, and B, like we did, Again, that's just playing what's already there. You're agreeing, you know? What's already in the chord is what's in the arpeggio you're playing. You get that good solid sound of agreeance. But whenever we do that thing I talked about a second ago where we go up two whole steps and we play a minor triad, we play that G sharp minor triad, right? It gives us these notes. G sharp, B, again, you see the agreeance here, as well as the new kid in town, the D sharp note. Now when you play that shape, your fingers might be telling you that you're playing G sharp minor. But if you ask the guy who's in charge here, the E major, you know, it sounds like you're playing the third, the fifth, and to an E, this D sharp note right here is the seventh. That's the seventh note of the E scale, or the note of major seventh away from E. You can look at it either way. And your ears hear this as the sum total of notes. Your ears don't hear these things separately. Your ears don't hear a major triad and a minor triad. It's kind of like taking like a big huge bite of like Thanksgiving dinner, right? Where you've got some turkey and you've got mashed potatoes and you've got cranberries and stuff. It's all getting mixed together and combined into one like mega taste in your mouth, right? Our ears do this whenever we have these kinds of stacked up arpeggios. You don't hear it as E major and G sharp minor. You just hear all these notes in terms of how they relate to Big Daddy E. 
A good way to do this is just to let that low E drone out and play those arpeggios over it. So you can hear that whenever we play the E major triad, we're hearing root, third, fifth. And when we play the G sharp minor triad, we're hearing third, fifth, seventh. You're gonna be getting jazzy with it in no time. Yeah, let's move on to the exciting world of minor seven arpeggios and how you're gonna form those. Now, we all know the sound of a minor chord. It's just a very straightforward, sad sound. A minor seven chord has a little bit of a softer, jazzier edge to it. A little more steely dan, if you wanna look at it that way. And in order to make that minor seven kind of tonality, all you gotta do is know how to combine two things that you already have down, your minor arpeggio and your major arpeggio. Easy stuff. So what you're hearing right there is that the keys were playing an E minor chord. And what I did to respond to that and make it sound like E minor seven was to play the E minor triad. Again, root, flat third, and fifth. And then where this gets fancy is by moving up one and a half steps, okay? One and a half up here to the G note, the flat third of the chord, and place a major triad right there. So we're gonna be playing what feels like a G major triad. Okay, so E minor, and G major, combined to make that beautiful E minor seven sound. So whenever you play an E minor seven chord or arpeggio, what you're playing there is the root, flat third, and fifth, just like a regular old minor chord as well as the flat seven interval. And again, there's a lot of different ways you can look at that. You could call that a minor seven interval and think of it as the seventh note of the E minor scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's a D note. And then go on a quest to find the D, just like your stepmom does every weekend. You could also think of that flat seven as being the note one whole step below the root. So if your root is E, flat seven is here. But the cool thing is, is whenever we play the E minor triad and the G triad under an E, we hear it as root, flat third, fifth, flat third, fifth, flat seventh. Again, to a G, yeah, that's the fifth. But we're not hearing this under a G, we're hearing it under E, where this D note represents that flat seven interval. It's all about what you're playing over, you know? You gotta get this concept that I kinda call harmonic relativity. You gotta get this harmonic relativity concept under your belt to really understand how all this chord construction and harmony stuff works. It's not about what your fingers are telling you. Your fingers are telling you root third fifth, but the harmony under E is telling you what it really is. Flat third, fifth, flat seventh. And I love the phrasing things that open up for you too whenever you play them that way instead of just using a stock, you know, arpeggio shape that you might have learned from a book or something like that. Whenever you're sliding in and out of these arpeggios, that's how you can get that really cool, like, kind of Marty Friedman sound that stands out and doesn't just sound like every other player sweeping up and down the same shapes all the time. And again, if you know some three or four string shapes for E minor and G major, use them up. So far in this lesson, we've combined the sounds of major and minor to make a major seven sound. Then we've combined the sounds of minor and major to make that minor seven sound. But there's also one more arpeggio type made from two simple shapes that I wanna show you guys before I send you off into this dark and cold night, and that is the dominant chord. <laughs> dominant chords are those funky, soulful things that you've heard all over like Beatles tunes as well as like every blues song in existence pretty much. Really useful chord type that we can make super easy. So what you just heard right there is the keys were playing an E major chord and I implied an E dominant sound over it. Now, the heart of a dominant chord is a major triad. Every dominant chord contains root, third, and fifth, but it adds in a special ingredient in the form of that flat seventh, like what our minor seven arpeggio did, 
to get that cool, funky, twangy sound. So if you're playing over a major chord and you want to imply a dominant tonality, here's what you need to do. Again, it's just two simple arpeggio types you already know. Just gotta know where to put them in relation to each other. Start off with your major triad, so in this case, E major. Then what you're gonna do is to move up two whole steps, kinda like what we did for the major seven. One step, two step. And play your diminished triad right here, okay? The one that was root, flat third, and flat fifth. Major triad, two steps above it, diminished triad. And that's how you're gonna get that dominant chord sound. Again, if you ask your left hand what you're playing when you play this, it's gonna tell you G-sharp diminished. But again, think about that harmonic relativity concept we were talking about earlier. To E, it hears it as root third, fifth, obviously. And then it hears this as third, fifth, and flat seventh. So we get that sum total of root third, fifth, and flat seventh, which is what makes a dominant chord sound the way that it does. A really cool tonality that works great in both styles of music, country and western. Again, let's use a different root note here so we have some more context to work with. If I was playing over a G, and I wanted to make it sound like G7, I would start off by playing the G triad, move up two whole steps to the B note, and play the diminished triad right there, B diminished. And that G is gonna hear that as root third, fifth, and flat seventh, making it sound like G dominant. And keep in mind too that all the stuff that we've been talking about today, about using two simple triad types to make a broader arpeggio sound, it's not limited to just like your you know, lead playing and playing hot licks and stuff like that. This is the kind of thing that you can do in your rhythm and chord playing too to imply bigger tonality. So again, now let's say you're playing over just a regular like G major chord, right? If I wanted to spice that up a little bit and make it sound a little less plain Jane, and let's say maybe aim for that G major seven, you know, a little bit more melancholy sound, what I could do is construct something like either a little chord stab part or maybe a little chord arpeggiation part based around the minor triad two whole steps above the root. Again, to make major seven, we play the minor triad two whole steps above the root. So in this case, that's gonna give me a B minor triad. I could make something that's just some simple like swipes on a B minor triad I know, like playing the top uh, three strings here on fret number seven. You can visualize that as part of a B minor bar chord if that helps. I could do something where I'm just chopping away on the top strings. Because again, to that G major seven, it sounds like I'm playing fifth, seventh, and third now. Not a B minor triad, but extensions of a G. And again, I'll re-emphasize this point again here. Don't listen to what your fingers are telling you what you're playing. Your fingers are gonna tell you you're playing B minor. But I want you guys to think about these notes in terms of what they mean to G. Again, harmonic relativity. That's one of the things I really want to leave you guys with in this lesson. Don't think about what the shape is. Think about what those notes mean in reference to the root note that they're being played over. Let's say, for example, that I was hanging on here to what feels like a G major triad. Seventh G, eighth B, seventh high E. Now, if I'm playing those notes right there over a G major chord, it just sounds like G major, because I'm playing third, root, and fifth. If I played that exact same thing over an E minor chord, the sound is gonna be drastically different. Because according to E, what I'm playing isn't root, third, fifth. To E, I'm playing fifth, flat third, and flat seven. So again, there's E, so there's the flat seven interval. So this sounds more like a cool, jazzier minor seven sound, simply because I'm playing this over an E minor chord now. So 
there you go guys, three simple tricks that you can use to get more mileage out of the stuff that you already know. Major, minor, and diminished triads can be strategically combined to form expensive sounding major seven, minor seven, and dominant chords in a flash. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to hit like and subscribe for new lessons coming at you every single week. And if you feel like you've learned something from this video, be sure to support my channel over on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Well guys, it's been fun as always, but I've got to jet. Those kittens aren't gonna declaw themselves. It's time for you to get away from the computer and go play some guitar. Less clicking, more picking.